Welcome to Pet Talk, everybody. I'm Lauren Collier. Now imagine coming home and seeing this. How cute. A homeowner in California got quite the surprise when she found a sea lion pup in her front yard. She says the pup was lying in the sun for most of the morning. Adorable. Rescue crews from SeaWorld came in to remove him. Nearly 250 young sea lions have been rescued so far this year along the San Diego County shoreline. That's three to four times more than usual. And the weaning season is only just beginning. Oh, so cute. And so is this little guy and gal. We've got Honey and we've got Otis sort of uh, blocking her there. But both of them are so precious and they are here with their equally precious humans, Liz Ball and Dana Newman. And they have all come to tell us about a wonderful program we can all get involved with. It's a pet therapy program and it is called Healing Hounds. So uh, welcome one and all. We're so happy to see you all. Very Thank happy you, to be here. And I know that uh, Dana, I'm going to start with you because you started this program back in 2004. 2004. Incredible. Um, it was sort of before therapy dogs were allowed in the hospitals and Stanford Hospital welcomed us and I went with not Ot Oso, Otis but my his predecessor Oso and we just go and visit with patients and bring smiles and rainbows down the hall. Unfortunately, Otis here is only a year <laughs> old and he's much more interested in honey than he is anything else. Can you come over and, and sit down? sort of like, oh, I'm not really oh, sure, man. but all right, let's uh, Let let's me try to try to intrude. Do. Maybe, maybe come a away, trick will work come away as and honey kind of <laughs> makes her move through the couch. Let but uh, it, it's really cute and it really sort of shows the diversity of uh, hounds that can get involved with healing hounds. And I know recently we had Don Smith on the show. Uh, he was here with his wonderful hound, Brazil, and he is one that is very actively involved in healing hounds and has been for a very long time. Don took the program over for two years and did a fabulous job running it when I just had too much going on. But he is involved in all kinds of therapy programs with dogs, the Read program, uh, children reading to dogs, he does uh, the Healing Hounds program and I think a couple others as yeah, well. Yeah, I know he had just come back from Newtown and it just so really cool. speaks of what the love of an animal can do. And I know Liz, honey, is just, look at that precious face. <laughs> so precious. So tell us, uh, how did you get involved and what would a, a typical day of a Healing Hound be? Well, I started with um, a, another dog that I had had uh, several years ago. I used to go to a... Um, a field near a nursing home and noticed that all the patients there would look out at the window at the dog and I thought you know what why don't I just try going in and saying hi and that started me on the on the road to doing this type of work and then I heard about Dana's program at the hospital and my parents were big uh, volunteers at Stanford Hospital for many years and I wanted to do that at Stanford Hospital so um, we started a few years ago and uh, it's wonderful. We're assigned specific floors that we go to, and we just kind of peek our head in with patients and say, you know, would you like a little visit? And they will either say yes enthusiastically, or sometimes they'll say, well, I don't know. And if they're a little reticent, I'll, I'll kind of poke her head in, and then they'll be like, oh, uh, sure, come on in. It's, it's wonderful. I mean, we're showing some of the pictures now, <laughs> and um, I know this must really make you proud, Dana, because you started the program, and really uh, what you've gotten back must be incredible. I mean, this picture is just, uh, it just really says it all. This is actually at a nursing home. Um, and what's interesting about the nursing homes is most of them don't require any sort of um, therapy certification in the nursing homes, whereas they would at a hospital. It's a little tighter restriction. Um, but if you have a dog that's you know, sweet and kind and you just want to take it around, you just make everybody's day. Oh, so um, what a difference. I so mean, just call your local nursing home and ask them if they accept dogs. And oh, very and often they'll say yes. you might be able to do that. Look, look at Honey with yeah. that little rescue bird. Um, but also, uh, so that's one way, but getting involved with healing hounds is another way. So I know people might be skeptical. They might think, oh, we need a lot of training. I mean, you do need some training. Uh, but can anyone get involved? And if so, how would we do that? I love this picture, too. Wow. There we are. Um, in order to get involved with the Healing Hounds program, we do require a ther therapy certification. And there are at least three that I know of therapy certification programs around. You can find them all on the internet. Um, so that's the prerequisite. And then you would come and you'd meet with me at the hospital, 
make sure it was something that the dog wanted to do. I don't care if the owner wants to do Absolutely. it, but I want to make That's sure the point. dog wants to do it. Right. Um, and if so, I'd find a slot for you, you know, either in the cardiology ward or the pediatrics or psychiatric ward, um, depending on what your dog wants to do. Again, we're watching some movies of this, and it's just, it's amazing. So uh, you get your dog certified, and it is a time commitment, but obviously it is so, so well worth it. And um, I, it's all different ages, though. Your dog has to be at least a year old and probably have its shots and, and such. But it doesn't have to be a, a puppy, and uh, there's also uh, kittens or cats. I mean, uh, sometimes an older dog is more beneficial because it's quieter and it will lie there and just like to be, you know, right. petted versus a younger dog sometimes can be a little too active, <laughs> such as my puppy here. <laughs> <laughs> Honey seems fine, but right. But, but, when, but of course, you know, when, when, to be fair, when you take Otis around, you know, it's, it's a little bit different because he's working. Here he's just sort of playing and, and sort All of took smells. a fancy to Honey who's probably not <laughs> interested. <laughs> so uh, this is a really fabulous program. I mean, I've seen it at work and it's just out of this world. How can people get involved? Where can they find Healing Hounds? And again, I think we should stress uh, that you are volunteers and uh, that anybody can take part. You don't have to do it all week long. You can do it a couple of hours. You just have to be willing to make the commitment, whatever it is, even if it's an hour. We look, we look for an hour a week, yeah. um, minimum, you know, just for the ho for Healing Hands program at the Stanford Hospital. But if you want to get involved with therapy work with your dog, call any um, nursing home facility or hospital facility or school or daycare and just ask them if they have a pet therapy program. Some of them will require certification, in which case you go through the classes. Others don't, and then you just you can start bringing your dog in and changing people's lives because it really does. Oh, it's fantastic! Thank you both for the wonderful work you do. So once again, uh, check it out, Healing Hounds. Just take a look, uh, and uh, I think you'll really be interested. And and before I say goodbye, I know we have to show off Otis's oh, trick new before trick. he bites <laughs> the, dog, the head hey, off Otis. of our little pet dog. Otis, dog. Look. Press the button. Here we go. Press it again. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. Yay! <laughs> Thank you, Lauren, <laughs> for being here. And as we go to break, wanted to show you this oh so special print. Check this out. It is so awesome. This is a blueprint made by the Animal Blueprint Company. They make these to order and have over 100 plus breeds available of dogs, cats, and horses. This, of course, was made for me. It's my beloved Bouvier. I just love it. These are created to look like a 1950s blueprint designed by a graphic designer who combined his passion for dogs, design, and architecture each print features a different breed, whichever you choose, drawn in full detail, along with facts about what makes that breed special. A distressed finish gives it the feel of a working blueprint used by architects, engineers, and even construction supervisors of the mid 20th century. Find out more. The company is called Animal Blueprint Company. You can log on to their website and tell them you saw them on Pet Talk, www.animalblueprintcompany.com. Love this. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Pet Talk. Wow, take a look at this beauty. It's an endangered panther sprinting back into the wild after being set free in Florida thanks to state wildlife officials. This gorgeous sandy colored 120 pound guy is the first panther ever to be released into Palm Beach County. He was rescued more than one year ago with his sister after their mom died. Both were raised at a conservation center since they were little babies. Only 160 Florida Panthers remain, and it's rare for these big cats to be cared for in captivity and then released. But in this case, wildlife experts hope that releasing him will help increase the highly endangered panther population. And talk about, wow, check out this awesome aquarium. It's fabulous. Aquariums are more popular than ever. Let's find out more. Please welcome Justin and Jessica Ficaro and their adorable doggy Boots. They are the owners of Elite Aquaria, a full service operation that installs, maintains, consults, and builds aquariums and ponds. <laughs> uh, we're happy to have you on Pet Talk. Welcome. I know Justin uh, you are a first-time Pet Talk guest, both of you are. You actually contacted me through Facebook, 
and uh, said you had started this company and wanted to spread the word, and you're right here in Connecticut, so we are happy, happy to have you both. And your okay. beautiful little boots, <laughs> who is so adorable. It's not that little. It's not that little. <laughs> And really, uh, when I was young a million years ago, uh, aquariums would be these small little fish tanks, and right. sometimes exotic, but now uh, they're everywhere and anyone can have them. Exactly, especially in the industry over the last 10 years, there's been huge advances in the ability to keep all different types of fish and corals. Um, so it definitely has grown, helped to grow the, uh, the industry. Uh, additionally, shows and uh, movies oh, that yes, have come that's out true. that have uh, definitely helped out. And I think there's been research that if you look at uh, an aquarium, I think it sort of gets you a little mellow and calms your nerves. And really, that's what's been happening here. Because uh, you came a little early to set this up, brought it on the set. And Jessica, I have to tell you, this is absolutely spectacular. Thank you. Really. Yeah. And there are definitely health benefits that come along with, you know, having aquariums. That's why you find them so many times in doctor's offices and hospitals. And, um, and then in the home, I mean, they've got the calming effect for, so if you've ever seen kids around an aquarium, you know, they'll ignore the TV and run over and, and you know, they just get mesmerized. Absolutely, so. it is, it's mesmerizing. Yeah. And, and talking about kids, this would seem like a wonderful a thing for a child to, you know, maybe start out with. It's a pet that does not really require too much uh, maintenance, though, uh, you know, you, you, you have to uh, feed it and maintain the uh, tank, which is where you come in. Um, but I know, Justin, you said one of your favorite clients is just a seven-year-old and uh, has a small tank, but it reminds you of you when you were that age. Right, exactly. I mean, that's how it started for me as a kid. Um, I had different tanks growing up. Um, I remember trips with my family up to the coast of Maine and just looking in the tidal pools and seeing all the different uh, animals swimming around. So that's where it all started for me. Uh, I went to school for marine biology and right after school I left and uh, started working for another company doing the same thing but decided that you know, I, I really wanted to do it on my own and have my own clients. So that's you know, the birth of Elite Aquaria came from. It's, it's wonderful and we're looking at some of the pictures uh, they look like pictures of, of, of photos, but these are photos of your aquariums. And I think it's interesting because there's all different types of fish there, and uh, they're placed in all different spots. So that must be something that uh, is really uh, taking off, too. Yeah. We definitely we do freshwater aquariums, saltwater aquariums. You could have a fish-only system or a full reef like the one that we've we've got here with corals and everything involved. And um, I mean, we've even done we've done a paludarium, which is uh, half land, half water. We did that for a school in Fairfield. Their science lab just installed three aquariums, and one of those was a paludarium. Wow! So. And it's all different types of fish. Um, there's freshwater fish, right. uh, there's saltwater fish, mm -hmm. so you can really do anything uh, you want. And now, what, what you guys actually do, you, uh, figure out what you want to do? Can the client do that? How does, how does this work? Well, we, it really depends on the client. We, uh, as soon as we get a phone call, we, the first thing we'll always do is do a consultation. We want to know the space. Um, we want to actually walk around with you, tell you what will work best for the aquarium and you know whether it's foot traffic and, and all that stuff. So we, we'll sit down with the client, see what their needs are, um, express to them the different requirements of the aquarium itself, and we kind of work together to form something that is perfect and custom for each client, whether it is a residential space or even commercial spaces. We do doctor's offices, um, office buildings, um, so it really is a collaborative effort. And, and you will go and maintain it if someone chooses, or they can, of course, do it themselves. Exactly. It really, uh, I guess it really just, <coughs> excuse me, it really just depends on what the client wants. Um, let's talk about this beautiful aquarium that you have uh, put in our studio, which we wish you could keep here, but we know <laughs> we can't keep it on the set. Uh, what are we looking at uh, here? This is actually a reef aquarium. Um, so there's fish, corals, uh, inverts, everything pretty much you're looking at is living. Wow. Even the rock itself has bacteria that help in the filtration of the tank. Um, there's right now focused on the cameras a Bengay cardinal um, fish. There's clownfish in there that have wow. been very uh, made popular by Nemo. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's also green chromis. There's three fish in there. They're blue, but they're actually called green chromises. Uh, depending on the light, they kind of reflect it differently. Um, and like I said before, there's corals, both stony corals Beautiful. and uh, 
leather corals. And, and this has a blue tinge, which I love, but you'll put different lighting in. It really just depends upon what uh, the person would like. So yeah. right, right, exactly. And that light that actually is running on that tank is um, it's pretty cool. It actually does a dawn, daytime, oh. and dusk, and it, and it actually goes through it, the whole thing itself. Fantastic. So it's all completely automatic, and uh, it gives you different hues during the day. So. Love it. And now the one next to Jessica, that's a little bit different. That seems to be a uh, more of a natural? I don't know, Jessica, you said that this is this sort is of the... This is a freshwater planted fresh aquarium. Water. So we've got some guppies in there and some shrimp, um, but not this to be is eaten. just to show. <laughs> 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 this is not just here to show, you know, this is, we could do aquariums as small as this, which is like an eight gallon aquarium, to as large as a 2,000 gallon aquarium. We've got one of those in Long Island. And um, planted aquariums have definitely become more popular over time where you could uh, really get it to look almost like a manicured landscape it's under it's very you know, interesting. grass and trees and things of that sort. So Very, very interesting. So there's all different uh, types uh, and one would think, oh, I have to spend so much money, but uh, I guess that's not necessarily true. You could get something, as you said, smaller up to something that might be, you know, more expensive. Right. And just like we said before with the um, working with the client, we'll always take the budget into consideration. and you know, find something that's going to work for them long term too, because you do have to look at the long term maintenance on, Absolutely. on the tank. So it's important to figure in all those uh, right aspects before you decide on what kind of tank to I go mean, with. I mean, the good thing is you don't have to take them for walks and clean up <laughs> after them, but uh, right. you certainly have to clean them and keep them fresh. Also, um, I'm so happy, but you uh, have so graciously uh, said that you're going to give uh, our Pet Talk viewers a special offer. Right, exactly. Um, anybody who mentions seeing us on Pet Talk will um, and signs a one-year contract service with us, we'll get the first month free. That's um, fantastic. We appreciate that. And uh, where can we find you? You can reach us at www.eliteaquaria.com. Um, our website is the main portal. You can find links to our Facebook page, Twitter. We've got a blog. We've got a photo gallery. So that's the main uh, place to reach us. Or you could give us a call at 203-521-8599. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Uh, and good luck. Thanks. And thank you, Boots. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but he's got one blue eye. He's gorgeous. Uh, and before we say goodbye to all of you, we want to tell you about a wonderful fundraiser coming up for a wonderful group, the Stratford Cat Project. Come on down to the Super Duper Weenie in Fairfield on April 26th between 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. Super Duper Weenie will donate a percentage of their sales to the Stratford Cat Project, so it's a yummy way to give back. There will also be a table set up with unique cat-themed items, some great door prizes, and you will get to meet some of the wonderful volunteers from the Stratford Cat Project and find out how they rescue foster and care for and find forever homes for their wonderful cats and kittens and please bring a donation of canned friskies or fancy feast and you will receive an extra door prize ticket for more information log on to their website that is www.stratfordcatproject.org thank you for joining us everybody have a perfect week this has been pet talk